is, is a question on how high should the minimum wage be. So just to give a bit of context, uh, the current minimum wage in Australia is just over $20 an hour. Um, so that's that's what it is at the moment. And uh, neither parties have really made a clear stance on, on this, but uh, the, the general ten, tendency is um, for Labor to increase this, but uh, they haven't really committed to it, in my opinion, at least. Um, so this, this, this is a bit of a... Uh, you know, statistics question. We don't really know all the numbers here, but uh, my my opinion on this is it should be higher, um, given the cost of living and how inflation has affected um, all, all the general workers. Um, uh, I think, given all of that, it should be higher. But but there are of course other considerations here. So, um, anyone wants to say anything about this one? I think I'll go first here. Um, yeah. I think um, and it's it's my it's my opinion uh, that uh, the issue of minimum wage should be reframed as uh, not as a minimum wage but as a minimum income. So that actually, if we reframe in that way, we'll I think we'll we'll start looking at uh, looking at what to be done, uh, the solutions in, in in a different perspective. I think we we would just expand the set of solutions that we have. So. Um, yeah. See, wage controls are uh, something like price controls. I mean, I mean, it's not really like price controls, but they have similar effects to some extent. Now, minimum wage is really a very politically very uh, um, very popular issue across the world. Uh, there is no, I mean, there is no society that doesn't have this kind of issue in in you know hotly debated in political circles. But I think what uh, we should look at is uh, how much money someone how much money someone is making in an year or you know, how much money someone is making rather than how much someone is getting paid for whatever work they're doing. I think uh, when we reframe it as a minimum income, I think we can look at what the state can do to increase the income rather than uh, forcing the employee to pay a higher wage. So I think um, any supplementation, if, if, you, if, if someone feels, say, uh, um, say for example, in, there, there could be like 10 provinces and where, you know, uh, the standard of life, the cost of livings might be different you know, across these. And say, you know, in, in a state or in a province where the cost of living is not so high than say something like Victoria or, or uh, the province where Sydney is, um, it would not really be, um, uh, I would not call it fair, but it, it might not be really prudent to have the same minimum wage for, you know, across the board. So I think what's better is to have a basic income uh, than a minimum wage which would offset, you know, uh, and which would add in money, you know, which would just give money uh, to those who are earning below a certain threshold, which could be set across, the, it, it could be set across the board or it could be set at a provincial level. And um, if you ask me uh, the effects that we see uh, because of minimum wage, uh, some of them could disappear. And actually there would be a real, there would be an actual rise of bargaining power for labor. If we go with basic income, at least there is there is evidence uh, to show that there is some data to show that. I think it should be tried out, um, and it's not like you know we are not really you know it's not a, like a shot in the dark. It, there, there is really a good case for that. I think we should reframe this issue everywhere, even in India. I think we should reframe this. Um, uh, even the same logic applies even for the minimum support price issue in India for farmers. It should not be a minimum support price. In my opinion, it should be a minimum income that farmers should have. And the state should ensure yeah. that the farmers gain a certain income rather than uh, force somewhere, someone or, you know, alter the prices in some fashion. Uh, that, that's yeah. a better mechanism in my opinion. Yeah, well, I agree with that. And I think we'll find this in this conversation with the four of us. We might be uh, expecting things that are not within, you know, 20, 30 years for Australia, just in terms of where we are. But basic income is really where we should be. And I completely agree with that. Um, but, but yes, unfortunately, this discussion even today is about minimum wage and, and on both sides of the party, they, they both talk about it. Um, we only got very minor parties like the Greens or, or the Reason Party talking about minimum, you know, universal basic income. Um, so, yeah, completely in agreement. In, interest, interestingly, minimum wage is going to be a contentious political issue because um, it's, it looks like a special, it's like, it's look like a, it looks like a special interest issue for labor, uh, for labor, you know, for it workers is. and all, whereas basic income is across the board. I mean, so That's it would right. be difficult to, you know, play it politically. Uh, so minimum wage is always, you know, you can always find, uh, you can always gather people, you know, who are 
because it's it sounds like you know you are doing something for a group instead of doing for everyone exactly. <laughs> so if you yeah. want to do something yeah. for everyone you know you don't get support <laughs> politically that's that, right that, that's right that's unfortunate but yeah but there should be a way to reframe this and that that's a political campaigning exercise yeah absolutely so we'll go to baba gaganani on this uh, i can only say um, and acknowledge the very important contributions made by new zealand humanists uh especially ian middleton and gaylene both of who were our guests in hyderabad at the indian humanist and babu gogineni humanist group meeting at the humanist cafe in uh, madhapur where they spoke about universal basic income and they were in india to network and meet with people who are advocating um universal basic income humanists around the world have always called for a living wage for everyone and they have also called for support to those who don't work either uh yeah i think it's right it's honorable that you are paid for your work uh but what if you are unemployed or what if you are just not working it will be a very small percentage of such people they still need to eat they still need a home not to promote laziness and irresponsibility but to recognize that there will be people with mental illness there will be people with handicaps of various kind you know a compassionate society a society which doesn't punish you for not living up to the standards even if the standards are legitimate to support them to help them to counsel uh, as far as minimum wage is concerned um, i agree uh, with sarath that we should be talking about income as in living wage living income the standards of modern world what is called human life in the western countries in the global north to australia is in the southern hemisphere um are pretty high rightly so uh good nutrition good education proper medical health care and support for you i mean this is about minimum wage but support for you when you stop earning at all uh in many countries of the world the system is moving to where you're responsible for your retirement uh yes to live the life that you want to live certainly you're responsible for it but to live the minimum human life with all the elements that i mentioned just now including a little bit of art culture entertainment i think that should be in rich societies rich states that shouldn't be a big argument it shouldn't be a penalizing of people because that can be done in employment in exams at university but once you are in society just let them breathe and live it makes it a happier country uh, people are fixated on productivity people are fixated on profit uh, but profit chasing has its cost and people pay for it people pay for it in terms of health i i'm not in the rat race myself because i'm not a rat as simple as that uh now people who force us into this chasing of uh competitive chasing of profits and i'm not fascinated by it i know that there should be management tools in place to make sure um productivity is assured as somebody who consults with companies i will say that's really needed but it shouldn't be where that is the be all end all of business uh i mean the big retail stores in the us or mcd's uh, or kfc's they employ a lot of people or supermarkets they employ a lot of people they are the biggest employers in most societies um i think if they are able to up the wage a little i don't mean that government should make them do it 
I don't mean that at all. But their customers can make them do it. Uh, they can, I mean, I have no problem paying half a dollar more or a dollar more for something they're selling and let that go to employee welfare. In the last employment I had at um, the Alliance Francaise, where I started my career, my last month's salary, I donated to my institution. And I said, the organization should match the donation and use that for staff welfare. The Alliance Francaise is an India registered, in India, it's an India registered organization. Its director is appointed by France, the government of France through the embassy and so on and so forth. And so much money comes in. This organization did not match my donation. I was not a low earner at that time there. They did not match it. And they just kept the money I gave. <laughs> So it tells us the commitment of employers in doing these things. So before I left India for Europe, I gave them a reasonable chunk of money. They welcomed it, but they did not have the commitment. The management committee is Indian. They did not have the commitment to match the money. And the government of France operating in India and giving funds to the Alliance Francaise and other things did not think a commitment nationally kept in their own countries is something they should extend to people associated with them outside. So there's no sincere commitment to welfare of people, but let's not forget we are living in a society mostly in the market economy, where if a thousand people are kicked out of jobs because they are found to be redundant, then the share price goes up. Now a thousand families are kicked out of reasonable income earning. If the company is already on the stock market, they must be paying all right. They got rid of, rid of, got rid of a thousand people and the share price goes up. It tells us something about the market economy. Uh, one thing is to talk about efficiency, profits. Another is to talk about this. Elon Musk says that once he takes over Twitter, his expectation from staff will be much, much severe compared to now not as much as he himself will ask of himself, but it will be severe. How about keeping it within the law? How about not threatening people that they will lose their jobs if they don't work more than what they are doing? Are you paying them more? Do you want more time? Look, I'm living in Australia. I find everybody is on vacation all the time and now and then they work. They are good, they're doing well. The nation is healthy. The nation is doing good. Let's learn from a good example. People living in the US, working on minimum wage, living off coupons, um, cringing on unhealthy food because that's the cheapest. Compare these two. And then we'll know if emphasis on minimum wage is an intelligent or healthy thing to start with. Um, yeah, I, I, I think people should work less, should relax more. France has moved to, a, in some cases, it hasn't taken off like a grand movement, uh, but has moved to four days a week work. Uh, 1860s, was it not in Australia that they asked for eight hour week, uh, sorry, eight hour working day, uh, even before it happened in Chicago. It was in Australia that the demand started. Um, 
we have moved to five days a week. And now they're talking four days. It was one of the election, um, let's say one of the issues in the election by Mechelon, uh, Jean-Luc Mechelon, who was saying that's what he wants things to be like. Said more leisure. Incidentally, um, the Tesla guy also wants people to not get into what machines can take over because he wants people to have enjoyable work. Um, with a whip in hand, you can't get people the pleasure that they get from the fulfillment you have from doing work. You know, a sense of achievement by the end of the day. I'm also aware of people who don't leave their jobs because they are very happy, not because of the salary, but because of their working conditions. And working conditions are not simply hours and money, it's colleagues, it's fairness in treatment, sympathy in approach. Um, for me, all those things matter and it should not be reduced to a minimum wage discussion. And right. Moro, just, just add, just to add one point. I think um, yeah. um, we, we should, we should, we should, we should try to maximize well-being of uh, workers and family and their families, and that should not go orthogonal with uh, whether we have to increase the wage or not. So, of course, giving them more, increasing the wage might be uh, part of, might be aligned with increasing the well-being. But if this is the only thing you are doing, so if you say that increasing the well-being is only about increasing the minimum wage, then we completely got the uh, you know, uh, dialogue wrong. So I think a, a good point that you mentioned there is uh, the amount of hours that uh, uh, you know, workers in US do, America and the United States do, compared to the amount of, uh, the number of hours that uh, workers in Europe or Australia or Canada, or they do. So if, if say, you know, if, if, if you're, if uh, there could be a side effect where if you increase, I mean, I'm not saying not, don't increase the minimum wage, but but if you only increase the minimum wage and do nothing else, then the incentive is strongly uh, aligned towards working for more and more hours. So for the, for the workers. So this this is not the only thing we should be doing. Uh, minimum increasing the minimum wage and that should we should not you know align the well-being argument completely with the minimum wage argument. So well-being is should be taken care of in a different manner i think and that should be what we should be focusing on and if there is nothing else the state can do within its purview uh, in, a, in a particular situation then maybe you can increase the minimum wage because that's the only thing you could possibly do at that point of time but i think uh, if you look at like uh, if you want to look at it like from a 20 year window then i think we should focus on well-being more than uh, you know making the minimum wage a, a, a contentious political issue ev with every election. Yeah, yeah, great. I think there's some great points there, but I, I'd get something from Aditya as a manager of, of a medium business with a number of employees. Uh, what's, what's your take on this? Uh, I think um, all over the world, Australia has got the highest minimum wage in saying that. Uh, my only point that I would add to what uh, Babusar and uh, Sarath have said is just increasing the wage would not make anyone have a better living because there's also a tax component. Uh, so making the minimum wage higher will also bring you into a higher tax bracket. So that should also be looked into. Rather than increasing the wage, I would suggest that the tax that the tax part is looked after for every employee. And I've got an idea just now. Uh, before we were discussing about having a, every corporate uh, uh, business should have a small department which looks after rationalism, humanism, uh, most into humanism than than rationalism, but humanism and also human rights. And if an employee willingly wants to sp spend additional hours or a part of uh, their time in the 76 hours per fortnight, giving them those additional minimum wage in the, in the same workplace will be better. And then th that can also be uh, uh, with no tax. So that's, that's my points with this. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a great point. Tax is a big... Uh, big blind spot when we talk about these kind of things. So that's, that's a very good point. And I think uh, uh, Baba Goganeni also made a good point around corporate responsibility. And I think in, in the Australian context, it's, it's quite a challenging one because 
if you look at any big industry like like the grocery industry for example supermarkets um, we have pretty much a duopoly we've got two big chains that kind of control the whole market so to get them to be responsible on the back of you know loyalty and brand uh, you know uh, brand integrity is is really challenging because they they don't have to do anything uh, for the society that they, they're just built the way to be driven by profits and there's no real competition coming in from the side saying look what we can do um, and that's a real challenge for Australia in many industries um, and, and, and that's something that we'll need to um, tackle so in this minimum wage tends to be the easy lever or the easy little um, switch that people uh, the politicians tend to switch on to kind of say you know we, we're trying to make it better for people who are earning minimum wage but uh, yeah I agree with all the points made in fact I, I think I think they're really really good points um, so on the balance should we keep it at somewhat higher for, for this purpose or should we go I agree because because of the pandemic the mm -hmm. living expenses have grown up probably that would yeah somewhat higher would make to bring that balance again in the, in the society. I, I would say so too, but uh, how do the other two participants feel? Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure it needs to be increased. I think um, it's at a good level as of yeah. now. Um, and yeah, we should not chase profits. But businesses are not charities and yeah. all their earnings cannot be for wages. So yes. I would say, um, <laughs> keep it like it is for the moment. During the pandemic, government, to all those people who were eligible, government was giving a good support. Yeah. Um, I think the Australian economy is very simple in that sense compared to many other economies and it's done a good job it's escaped the global financial crisis it's been well managed i think um i don't think it should be um i'm only able to think of a french word i don't think it should be jostled much uh, things are going all right we are in a crisis People had lost jobs, government was helping. Companies had shut down, they're coming back um, into business. This is the wrong time to bring in a higher equation, higher value equation into survival of businesses. Global supply chain has been damaged very badly. Prices have increased, I agree. Um, look, house prices are increasing, but it looks like Australia, there are many people who own two or three houses, a lot of them. We should not be making the economy work for those who are investing in more houses than the one they are living in. Um, there is a boom in the economy, the real estate economy, which is surely going to collapse at some point. People are not earning a lot, staying at home, therefore not going to the beaches and not eating in restaurants. And with the spare money, they went and bought houses on loans. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, it's because you could save that $10,000 to $50,000 that you alone or in collaboration with others started investing in real estate. Yeah. But it's a bank which has lent you the money and surely the interest rates will go up by a percentage yeah. or two. And they that have already be... last month. Yeah. Yeah. And don't we know that a back of the envelope calculation tells us many first time buyers may have to spend, not spend, pay back between $600 to $1,000 more per month as their mortgage. That's right repayments. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't factor it in when they bought the house and there's going to be trouble. Yeah. So, especially because there's been a pandemic and we're all coming out of it, I think now is not the time to talk about all this. Now is the time to reestablish businesses, to settle down people, help them with this newfound possibility that they can work from home. Yeah. Uh, 
the nation gains when you don't use too much petrol for travel or when you when you don't go sit in an office and use up the resources air conditioning and so on you can downsize yeah. businesses let them do all that yeah uh, nobody is starving on the minimum wage now uh, nobody is deprived of on full time work i mean yeah nobody is deprived of a regular life and as aditya said it's one of the higher wages minimum wages in the world yeah so i think it may not be a priority okay so in the interest of uh, democracy we'll take shards fight as well <laughs> i'm okay with about the same as now like yeah you you've been convinced <laughs> yeah, I've been convinced because as uh, awesome. once Babu has said, I think uh, asking for more wage now at this point of time is a luxury than having a basic need. So basic needs are already met with current uh, minimum wage. Fair enough. Sure. Do you feel the same? Uh, I think it should be about the same as now. <laughs> I'll just add one point. Uh, see, uh, increasing minimum wage is a one-way street. Okay, you ca you can't yeah. reduce it. So the the way how so so. so you know if if you are on one way street that's 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 bad politics in my opinion because mm. you can't change things uh, so uh, so i i would say you know um i would say i would say this um because inflation is high uh, as a stop gap measure the best way to do is to offset the income you know just give a, give a payout you know which, yeah. which is which is not a political issue which which is not a one way street yeah. because apparent yeah. because it's good thing that you know giving payouts is not part of uh, political campaign you know election yeah. agenda <laughs> so and and so in in for, when you look at inflation right i think the generally you know the recipe uh, to address it in medium term is to increase the interest rates and that also depends on the context but most of the time i think uh, the situation that babu gugnini has described is what it is i mean you people yeah. tend to take loans because you know interest are down so you increase the interest rates and then they get uh, so uh, that that's a way to control inflation that's generally the recipe so yeah. that is something that's not a one way street you increase the interest for like two years for uh, maintain their interest rates and then you roll it back so that's something that uh, that central banks typically do that's not a political yeah. so i think it should be about the same as now for all sorts of prudent folks awesome awesome now is we we do have uh, democracy winning that battle it's good <laughs> um There's only four of us, so I'd hate to get a tie on any of these questions, but we'll keep going. <laughs> so, political parties should have gender quotas that require them to have a comparable number of male and female parliamentarians. 